Winnability cannot justify choosing criminal candidates, strong words from the Supreme Court, which has told political parties that they must upload details of criminal cases against candidates on their websites. Also on social media, the Supreme Court flagged an alarming rise in the criminalization of politics in the last four national elections. The Supreme Court today ruled it is mandatory for parties to upload details of their candidates' criminal history on their websites, <coughs> on social media, and in newspapers within 48 hours of selection. What's more, political parties need to specify reasons for selecting candidates having pending criminal cases against them on their website. Parties must submit these details to the Election Commission within 72 hours. A failure to do this would be considered contempt of court. Well, the Supreme Court has been absolutely clear on this. Joining us now to look at whether this is something which can be uh, viable in terms of implementing, whether our political parties have the will to actually doing this. Uh, Professor Jagdeep Chokar, the founder member of ADR India. ADR keeps the tab uh, on uh, the, the legal standing of our MPs and MLAs. Vivek Reddy, the BJP leader. Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, former chief election commissioner. And Kalikesh Singh Dio uh, of the BJD joins us uh, as well. Um, Mr. Choker, uh, not only this is something that's come up in the past, it's come up in 2018. What's different this time around is that not only are political parties obliged to list the, the names of their leaders with criminal records, they have to give an explanation of why such a person has been nominated by the party. Uh, do you realistically expect that to be implemented? Well, it will perhaps be implemented in the letter, but certainly not in spirit. Even in 2018, there was a five-judge constitutional bench which had said that the advertisement should be given in newspapers and obviously they were given in some nondescript newspaper in a corner. So the point is the Supreme Court in 2018 said this. Give me half a minute. Yeah. We have issued the aforesaid directions with immense anguish. A time has come that the parliament must, must, make law to ensure that persons facing serious criminal cases do not enter into the political stream. Uh, then they go on, the nation eagerly awaits for such legislation for the society has a legitimate expectation to be governed by proper constitutional governance. The voters cry for systemat systematic sustenance of the constitution. The country feels agonized when money and muscle power become the supreme power substantial efforts have to be undertaken to cleanse the polluted stream of politics yep. by prohibiting people with criminal antecedents so that they do not conceive of the idea of entering into politics right. they should be kept at bay right and nothing now, has happened this was 2018 but the information that the supreme court even today has asked political parties to put on the website so did it ask in 2018. But it doesn't imply that these political leaders will be banned. That can only take no, place it does, it if there is legislation not at all. in parliament, right? No. It, this is just a notification to the public that these are the people you are voting for. We have been notifying the public for 18 years. Right. All entire media has been reporting it. Right. The And they are, I don't know why the Supreme Court is shying away from following the principle that okay. they followed in 2002. Okay, so Dr. Chakot, just one moment. Let me go across to... Uh, Dr. Qureshi as well, former Chief Election Commissioner. Dr. Qureshi, even if our political parties now on, on Facebook or Twitter, wherever else, their websites say that these are the, the names of our leaders with criminal records, uh, would that be enough of a deterrent or is, does it just serve to inform people of who they are voting for? Ultimately, in the absence of legislation which bans those with criminal records, where will the real cleanliness in the system take place? I entirely agree with what uh, Professor Chokar has said, and that's what both of us have been saying for a long time. Uh, uh, to my mind, the, the today's order will be as much of a deterrent as a, a warning on a cigarette packet which <laughs> where 85% of the space is occupied by, by an announcement that this is injurious to your health. But cigarette smoking hasn't gone down. So uh, this is uh, quite a bit of tokenism. And in fact, uh, and I entirely agree with Professor Choker about the expression he used, why the Supreme Court is shying away from something which, to my mind, is perfectly legal. For instance, uh, they say that, uh, you know, there is presumption of innocence till you are convicted. 
but there are two lakh seventy thousand prisoners in jail who are under trial, which means not yet convicted, which means innocent, and you have taken away four of their fundamental rights. Fundamental rights, I repeat, right to liberty, freedom of movement, freedom of occupation, right to dignity. Now you can take away very conveniently within the maximum of law four fundamental rights of innocent people. Yes. Now right to contest is not even a fundamental right. Why can't it be suspended? And very recently, right to liberty, to freedom of expression, Article 19 has been suspended in the larger national interest. Is this, is this not a larger national interest? Yeah. In a CVC, old CVC judgment, Supreme Court had talked of institutional integrity, importance of institutional integrity. Yeah. Now, what about the institutional integrity of parliament, where more than 40% of the people have cases? We go all over the world, and the questions which people ask, you know, make us feel so embarrassed, I can't describe to you. Uh, Vivek Reddy, if you just look at uh, MPs with criminal records, um, in, in this uh, parliament, 39% of BJP MPs have criminal records, 57% of Congress MPs, 81% JDU, 43% DMK, 41% Trinamool. This is a, uh, according to, to ADR. These are horrific statistics. This is according to affidavit submitted by the candidate. Right. This is according to their own admission. These are horrific statistics. Uh, and yet many of these leaders are some of the senior most leaders in every political party. So even if there is a cleanup of the system, is it realistic to expect that parties would drop some of their top names, including the BJP? Well, I think, Vishnu, this is a process that, that has been hit by gradualism. I think the Supreme Court, with its various <coughs> judgments, has asked two important questions. Two important questions to political parties and the voters. Let us agree. First of all, it has, it has touched the moral conscience of political parties and asked us, why are you fielding such candidates? We are saying it is out of compulsion, nonetheless. But still, let me agree that this vice has hit every political party and has hit the institution of democracy. But the larger question is, today Supreme Court has shifted this issue from mere tokenism to really asking political parties, to prick the moral conscience of political parties and the voters, it has first asked the political parties, why are you fielding them? Please give us reasons. It has next asked the voters that here are the reasons, would you still vote for them? I think the Supreme Court has really pushed this agenda to the edge. It has asked the system itself as to whether these persons are required and left it to the process of democracy to decide. Okay. I think. This is a really a bigger, big step in stepping stone to ensure that we break away from this uh, systematic uh, problem and bring in more purity in electoral politics in India. To that end, I think this is really a measure which, 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 uh, which has great implications and which will, have a, which will have a good impact in days to come on the politics of this nation. Kalikesh, um, it's a stepping stone, to use Vivek's words, but, I, I, it's, but it's just that, right? It's a stepping stone. Whether we can actually realistically believe that there would be no criminal candidates in our elections, it's, that's still a long way away. My question is this. Even if you notify um, in, in websites, in newspapers, and elsewhere, is that realistically, can we realistically believe that voters all across the country, many of whom do not have access to these websites, or social media, or do not have access to the internet, will actually know uh, about about who their candidates are. So, who? So, isn't this something which just appeals to a relatively small group that a large number of people may not even access these websites, even if they can? Look, Vishnu, I, I mean, none of us want criminalization of politics. <laughs> we all want a very clean, uh, sort of more pure political system. But the reality is, even in the last 2019 election, we were all asked to declare our cases uh, against us. We did so in social media, in the, in the normal media, and on our affidavits, of course. But that has very little impact on voters on large parts of the country. I think in some areas of the country, you know, some sort of uh, muscle is considered an asset for political, both tic giving the tickets to them as Risa, well as winability of the even, candidate. Even in your own state, Kalikesh, the numbers, I believe, 21 BJD candidates with criminal records in the last elections? Look, let me, I, I, was, I was coming to that. Look, uh, the other thing is, it's the easiest thing to do 
is to file an FIR on somebody. And it happens to a lot of political uh, uh, people. I've had FIRs filed on me. Luckily, at a time that I wasn't present in the state of Odisha, so they were, you know, they were taken out during the course of investigation. But can you imagine if there is an op if there's a government who's against uh, against you and you're fighting an election? Is the easy thing for them to file FIRs, have FIRs filed <clears> against <throat> you, and then? you know, get, get them charged, get you charge sheeted and then go on to the court of justice. So I think if we really want to have a law which, uh, which prevents criminalization, we need to get deeper into it. Okay. While we agree with the Supreme Court's uh, moral sort of point, we have, to get into we, have to, we have to get our hands dirty and get into details. What defines criminalization? At what level can we ban a candidate? How can this be not misused by both the government and the state and the center? I and only then will it be This effective. is in fact a point which Kalikesh mentions which Raghav Chadda of the Aam Aadmi Party, who I spoke to earlier on today, had, had a point to make, that the equation between, say, the Aam Aadmi Party and the BJP in Delhi, which controls the police <coughs> force, has been horrific in the past. Therefore, there are MLAs who say or allege <coughs> that, look, for anything that I say, even if it's a protest, a peaceful protest, there is a case which is put against me. Therefore, if you say that, they cannot, that, that everybody over here is equally bad and is a criminal, then that's not fair because you have to understand the system they operate in. How does one respond? If you go back to the original Supreme Court judgment in our case in 2002, <coughs> the Supreme Court had clearly said only those cases are to be declared where charges have been framed. Now, framing of charges is the fifth stage in the criminal jurisprudence process. FIR uh, filing is not to be dis disclosed. And if I, a complaint is filed, that is investigated, then a FIR is filed, then that is investigated, then a charge sheet is presented to the court of law, either a magistrate or a judge. And only after the judicial mind has been applied, then charges are framed. We are talking of those cases, number one. Number two, when we talk of frivolous cases, now who can get a frivolous case registered against a aspiring politician? The answer is only another politician. Yeah, precisely. So this frivolous cases problem, if there is any, is created is by politicians and... Aren't our politics the politics of vendetta? We see this at all levels in the country. Well, it applies to everyone. Every right. party does it. So why can't the politicians say we will not do this? When the society wants a solution, they want, they say, find a solution, we will not stop doing it, but we should not be disturbed. Okay, Dr. Kureshi. No, I want to make yeah. one more point, yeah. uh, which was said by the earlier speaker, that uh, it, the onus is now on the voters. It is very easy to blame the voters, but if there are three candidates from major political parties in the constituency who have a reasonable chance of winning, what, yes, I and know. they have criminal cases against them, what choice does a voter have? We also analyze what are called red alert constituencies, right. where three or more candidates have criminal cases against them. About 45 to 50 percent constituencies in the country are red alert. Okay. Last word to you, Dr. Qureshi. Again, this point of vendetta politics, where one political party tries to get FIRs against another political party. We see allegations of this at all levels. In this scenario, when there are uh, when there are people or political leaders who say that there are fake cases against them, even if they've moved beyond the FIR stage, then how realistic is it to expect our political parties to adopt, uh, you know, what we ho all hope for, clean politics where nobody has a criminal record? Yeah, no, that point is quite valid because false cases are uh, filed very often in, the, in politics. Which is why one of the safeguards which the Election Commission has been mentioning is that the only heinous offences like rape, decoity, murder, kidnapping. I mean, if you violate Section 144, you slap somebody or abuse somebody, those minor cases are considered minor and not taken into account. Only the heinous offences which carry imprisonment of five years or more. Uh, they should be taken in. Of course, even a false case of rape can also be filed in, uh, uh, in politics, that, that is true. Now, the, an alternative route which Supreme Court should have taken cognizance of, which actually it has about four or five years ago, they said that these uh, cases should be fast-tracked. Right. And uh, Supreme Court had given a direction that uh, to all the courts in the country that decide these cases against politicians within uh, one year, and if you cannot, 
report the reasons to your uh, respective Supreme Court. Right. I think Supreme Court should itself review the status of uh, the direction which they had given some years ago. Okay. Because that when is the other route which uh, perhaps right. uh, legally is cases. more sound. I take your point, Dr. Kureshi. I'm sorry I'm completely out of time, but I think... Uh, I think Vivek's uh, words were the most accurate. Uh, this is just a stepping stone that we are far, far away from what we hoped for. But at least people will get some more transparency in the system. The Supreme Court says if the names of those with criminal records isn't placed on social media, websites and other areas with an explanation of why political parties are selecting these leaders to contest in elections, then that would be contempt of court.